Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our pan-Orthodox Christmas concert. I'm Deacon Deborah Christos Nicholas Signori. I'm Nicholas Anton, and we'll be your MCs for the evening. We're going to begin with the uh, remarks of our hosting uh, bishop, His Eminence Mor Dionysius John Kowak, Archbishop and uh, Patriarchal Vicar of the Syriac Orthodox Archdiocese of the Eastern United States. Immediately following His Eminence's remarks, the Syriac Orthodox Archdiocesan Choir will uh, lead us in the Lord's Prayer, sung in Aramaic, the language of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So without any further ado, Sayyidna Mor Dionysius Chantua. So welcome, your eminences, graces, esteemed clergy, deacons, brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to our first pan-Orthodox Christmas concert in this beautiful cathedral of St. Mark. Merry Christmas in advance, brief Mauloded Moran, peace and love, Shlomo Ufub. I give thanks to our Almighty God for bringing us together today to celebrate our Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, with Him and hope. Ever since we, the Eastern and Oriental Orthodox Churches, have started to meet together as one whole body, we have spoken about having this concert. The concert is a way for all of us to witness our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with one another. Singing hymns and playing music has always held a key role in worshiping God in all our beautiful traditions and languages. Today, we will hear various types of music and hymns from our sister church's beautiful choir. These churches include the Coptic, Armenian, Greek, Antiochian, Ethiopian, Serbian, Syrian Orthodox of Antioch, and the Orthodox Church of America. I would like also to mention that all proceeds from tonight's concert will go to Syria in order to help our suffering brothers and sisters there. Allow me please to extend my appreciation to all the choirs participating tonight and all those who helped organize this event. I hope all of you enjoy the concert and I wish that this will become an annual tradition. Again, I'd like to wish you a very happy and merry Christmas and a healthy New Year and may the Lord God bless all of us. Welcome to your home. Thank you. May I ask you to stand up, please? Unto you and before you, O God, who accepts prayers and answers petitions, we pray this Lord's Prayer, which your holy and only begotten Son taught us, crying with a penitent heart and saying, Abun Bishman.
like to now welcome His Eminence Archbishop Elpido Foros of America, who is the Chairman of the Assembly of Canonical Orthodox Bishops of the United States of America. Your Eminence. St. John Chrysostom once wrote, Nothing so arouses the soul, gives it wings, sets it free from the earth, releases it from the prison of the body, teaches it to love wisdom, and to despise all the things of this life as concordant melody and sacred song composed in rhythm. This is what St. Chrysostom says. Tonight, this saying could not be more true. It is a real pleasure and honor to be present tonight, to allow our souls to be lifted up by the beauty of these liturgical hymns produced by our various church traditions. It is striking to see how spiritual words and theological expressions reach a whole new dimension when they are accompanied by music, when they are interpreted by human voices alone. Tonight's concert will feature hymns sung for the first time by no less than 80 very talented choirs from our various church traditions. The harmony of music serves the ecumenical conversation between our churches. Our quest for unity, our quest for communion, requires us to explore new eras where Christians can come together, where Christians can work together, can sing together, and bear witness together to the fullness of Christ's teaching sacrifice and resurrection for the life of the world. Oriental Orthodox and Eastern Orthodox churches share many commonalities. Allow me to remind you how crucial the dialogue between the Oriental Orthodox churches and the Eastern Orthodox church is. Throughout the last several decades, our churches have worked together in a spirit of true reconciliation, as was clearly stated in the joint agreements of 1981 and 1990. While we are fully aware of the challenges involved, we are convinced that meeting is not only important, but necessary as we continue our spiritual journey towards unity. This is our goal and in favor of a common witness to the life of the Church through common worship. Arguably, the Oriental Orthodox Churches are the closest, the closest spiritual family, the closest Church with which we are trying wholeheartedly to restore full unity. You should know that the American Commission is working very actively, and I pray that we will see some serious progress in the coming months. This brings me to a more sensitive subject, which is the faith of Christians in the Middle East. As you know, today's proceeds will go to help sufferings in Christ or suffering Christians in Syria, as His Eminence already said. We are united by an ecumenism of blood. Christians in Syria, no matter what their confession are, is, they are exposed, all of them, to violent conflict. They need our support and our prayers, especially his eminent metropolitan Paul of Aleppo, the brother of the patriarch John, of, of Antioch, and, and of course, his eminence metropolitan, Johanna Brahim of Aleppo, the Syrian Orthodox Church, who were kidnapped in April 2013. This is only one example among many others, which exemplifies the dangerous plight of our Christian brothers and sisters in this part of the world. 
dear brothers, ladies and gentlemen, tonight is about celebrating beauty. Beauty as a way of glorifying God, as a way of touching the divine, the divine which is especially relevant in this Christmas season. Music can be an expression of the beauty as one of the most precious gifts of God. As Dostoevsky wrote, beauty will save the world. I also would like to express my deepest gratitude to His Eminence, Archbishop Dionysius, for hosting this concert. May the love of our incarnate God, our Lord Jesus Christ, inspire our hearts and illumine our future steps towards unity and communion as his ultimate gift to us. Thank you all for your kind attention. I'm still here because I want to share with you some good news I have from Constantinople, from Istanbul today. We have a new Armenian Patriarch of Constantinople. His name is Sahak Mashalian. I want to congratulate our Armenian Orthodox brothers for their new Patriarch. Thank you, Your Eminence, for your remarks. And now, the uh, moment you've all been waiting for, the musical portion of the evening. The first choir that we'd like to welcome up is the St. Vladimir's Seminary Singers. These singers, representing the Orthodox Church in America, will offer a number of hymns in English. They will employ two styles of chant, namely the unison Znameni chant and harmonized Serbian chant. Welcome.
brothers and sisters, the choir of St. Leon's Armenian Apostolic Church.
The St. Nicholas Antiochian Orthodox Cathedral Choir is representing the Antiochian Orthodox Christian Archdiocese of North America. The choir, directed by Fadi Barumana, will chant Christmas hymns in the Syro-Byzantine style. Welcome.
Brothers and sisters, we will have the Holy Trinity Choir of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church, Archdiocese of New York, and the surrounding regions. And they will be chanting the hymns Aman de Amane, or Truly We Believe, and Sidhat Etsiavir, or Glory Be to God. Yeah. <laughs> 
singing traditional Serbian melodies, harmonized and arranged for a mixed choir. The last time the choir sang together was on Easter 2016 in the Serbian Orthodox Cathedral of St. Sava. Later that evening, a fire destroyed the church. The parish is grateful to the St. Eleftherios Greek Orthodox Church for hosting them during the rebuilding process and thanks all of you for the opportunity to share their Christmas songs.
Archdiocesan Byzantine Choir, directed by D Dr. Dimitrios Kecharias, has appeared in prestigious concert venues such as Carnegie Hall, Symphony Space, American Hall, the Metropolitan Museum, as well as the ancient Cathedral of St. Irene's in Constantinople. This evening, some of the members of the choir will offer four hymns taken from the Christmas ecclesiastical repertoire. The hymns will be chanted in Greek and in the Constantinopolitan Byzantine tradition. Welcome.
to paraphrase the emissaries of uh, St. Vladimir when they visited the Hagia Sophia for a moment. I didn't know if I was in heaven or on earth. Next, we have the Seraphim Chorus of the Coptic Orthodox Church, along with deacons. <laughs> the Egyptians are in the house tonight, along with deacons of the Coptic Orthodox Diocese of New York and New England, and the Coptic Orthodox Archdiocese of New Jersey. They will be chanting selections from the morning doxology, the doxology of the Nativity, and the Wednesday Theotokia. Took flesh from the virgin for 
salvation. Come behold and be amazed, praise and sing with joy on account of this mystery which was revealed to us. For the fleshless one took flesh, the Logos became body, the one without beginning began. The timeless one entered into time. The incomprehensible one they touched, the invisible one they saw, the Son of the living God, truly became the Son of man. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In one I was that is, we worship Him and glorify. I the Father looked from heaven and found no one like you. He sent his only begotten, who came and took flesh from you. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
This is what's wonderful about events like this, fathers and brothers and sisters, is that we get to see our one Orthodox faith made incarnate in such a beautiful way in so many different earthly cultures. Our final choir of the night before our closing remarks will be once again our hosts, the uh, choir of the Syriac Orthodox Archdiocese.
What a beautiful preview of this celestial life this evening was, with a, a great multitude of people from all nations and people and tongues chanting praises to the Lamb. Finally, tonight, brothers and sisters, we have the closing remarks of His Grace Bishop David, the President of the Standing Conference of Oriental Orthodox Churches, <laughs> Bishop of the Coptic Orthodox Diocese of New York in New England, and Patriarchal Exarch of the Coptic Orthodox Archdiocese of New Jersey. Ladies and gentlemen, His Grace Bishop David. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. I think there's only one word to describe tonight's event. Wow. To just put it in one word, I have been looking forward to uh, this event for so many weeks and it exceeded my expectation. I was really looking forward to getting together with all my brothers and sisters from the respective churches and leaders and hierarchs and fathers and all the people, the cathedral is overpacked with people tonight, which shows really how much we have this very strong desire for our unity and we take every opportunity to come together in love as brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, tonight, this event was truly a taste of heaven. Because as it's mentioned in the book of Revelation, that before the throne were multitudes from all nations, from all tribes, from all people, and from all tongues. And I want to add four more. From all cultures, we have seen so many cultures today, how every country worships in their own culture, from every music, different music, some with instruments, some without. From all ages, there were young and younger, no old. In the church, there is no old. <laughs> and from all genders, women and men, worshiping together, this is truly a taste of heaven. Let me tell you how this event came about. After the enthronement of His Eminence Archbishop Elpidophoros of the Greek Orthodox Church, we as Oriental Orthodox Churches went to congratulate His Eminence. And it was such a marvelous event to show a lot of love and a lot of desire to work together. How can we work together? What can we do together? Previously, we had gathered in uh, United uh, Nations uh, events where we alternate between Eastern and Oriental. Every church does it once. 
and we pray for the United Nations. But after many years, not many people were showing up to the event. So we wanted to do something different. And here we are, we came up with this idea. Why can't we have a Christmas concert where all the churches present in their own tradition their Christmas hymns? And everyone liked, loved the idea, in fact. And His Eminence, Archbishop Mordianus John Kawak, your Archbishop in this cathedral, he wanted to host us. So thank you so much for hosting us, Your Eminence, in your magnificent cathedral. We really feel we are one today, and we feel no difference. And we feel the love among us, everyone. Can anyone tell who is from which church? I don't think so, because we are truly one in Christ. Jesus, our Lord, wants us to be one, so that they be one. Tonight we have sent a message to all our leaders throughout the world that we can work together and as much as we can in whatever, we, whatever is allowed, we will do it. We are planning more things to come by the will of God, but I'm not going to spoil everything all at once. You will hear more about events that we do together. We have so much that unites us and let us put aside any differences and focus on what makes us one and what unites us. Because we believe that we as a whole are much stronger than the sum of our parts. Meaning, one hand is much more useful than five fingers, right? You cannot have five loose fingers and be of any benefit. But when we are one, like the one hand, together we can do a lot and that's why we are together tonight to show this desire to be one as his eminence alluded in his speech as well and as his eminence said that we want this not to be just one event but we want to be an annual event and we want to do other events that bring us together. When we meet together, we find that we all have the same challenges in our churches. And the more we can work together, the more we can overcome such challenges. As His Eminence mentioned, that the proceeds from this night will go to our suffering brothers and sisters in Syria, whom we feel we are one with, and we feel your pain and we feel what you are going through because we also, we are a persecuted church just as you are. We feel your pain and as St. Paul mentions that if any member suffers, the whole body suffers as well. So I encourage all of us to give to such noble goal. There are some people that I must thank. I don't know how many people have worked. I'm sure there is a big team, but at least there are four people who worked so hard to make this night possible. Father Joseph Shamaoun. Where is he? Alabuna. Father Kirillus Antonius from the Coptic Church. And the two Nicholases, the, the uh, Coptic and the Greek. They have been working so hard to make this night possible. I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have. Thanks be to God, thanks be to His Eminence, more Dionysius, 
John Kawak for hosting us. Thank you for your presence, your eminence, Archbishop Elpidophoros. Thank you for your presence, Bishop Irene of the Serbian Orthodox Church. We appreciate and we value your leadership and your participation tonight. It has been great. Thanks to all the fathers who have attended and mostly thank you for coming to share with us because without you, it wouldn't be a real success as it is. Thank you so much. We hope to see you again in such great events. God bless you.